Hello again, all you lovely people out there on the tube of views. It's me, that gaming nerd John, and we're here with our final episode of the second area of the destruction sequences for 13 Sentinels Aegis Room. Exciting times. Um, we're going to be seeing uh, two of probably the most annoying fights um, in this particular chunk of the destruction sequences. They're going to enhance uh, one of my least favorite enemies to face which is thrilling, but thankfully, due to vast amounts of overleveling, not a problem. Uh, and then they'll be introducing one last key concept that we'll see expanded upon more in the third area of the destruction sequences, so kind of a, a sneak peek of what's ahead. Um, so that'll be interesting, uh, as well as showcasing uh, probably one of the best songs in the game. Uh, but we'll get to that when we make our journey through that mission, so why don't we just go ahead and dive right on in. Alright, so, uh, yes, modified shield Apsos units will be appearing in this mission. It's as if someone actually reached into my nightmares related to 13 Sentinels and went, Here we go, we'll take this gem. Uh, Shinonomi and Sekigahara having to be on the strike team, not a big deal there. Both good characters, so definitely a good thing. Uh, we will certainly be needing those sentry guns. Um, oh, but first and second gen onlys, look at me, reading and things. It's, it's not hard. Except when I forget it. Apparently. Cool, let's get started! I have to say, the composite ceramic armor. Our enemies have some smart looking defenses. Between kit like that and a chance to disengage my limiters, my sentinel would be invincible. Sounds to me like you're just looking for an excuse to punch them. I have all I need. Let them send their machine swarms and their four legged beasts. I'll take them all down myself. Now without an EMP, dumbass. You can't just punch the flyers and the shield guys. Why do you even want extra armor? Isn't that why you got your defense mode? You need to pick your equipment based on the situation. If you two want to play hero, do it on your own time. What'd you say? You really are trying to start shit, huh? Don't let me in with Ogata. I'm actually serious about winning. Oh, and you don't think I'm serious, Hijiyama? Do I sound like I'm joking to you? Hey, don't let me interrupt you guys, but uh, we've got company. Alright, so you have kind of a breakdown at the beginning of the episode of the various capabilities of the Gen 1. Kind of the more advanced kit options, so you have like the limiter release to go more offensive oriented. You have the defense mode to be far more defense oriented. You have the composite ceramic armor, which is what those gladiator sentinels uh, showcased. And it can definitely be useful, especially in those missions where it is like hordes of those smaller, weaker enemies, because basically like... Between defense mode and ceramic armor, um, you would be untouchable. Um, but the only thing to keep in mind is that each of those particular options does occupy a, uh, a slot from your Sentinel's abilities to do actions. So, like, it's something that you see a lot, uh, especially for, like, the Gen 4s. I have the Hyper Condenser, which allows them to have more interceptors, have it cost less. Uh, most of the Gen 1s, I focused on the skill that enhanced one of their attack options. Um, so each of the pilots, like, there's a certain skill that they had that I liked in particular, and that's what I chose to have as their, like, equipped passive skill. Uh, you can choose a different loadout that utilizes those other abilities, utilizes the limiter release, utilizes um, things like defense mode, ceramic armor, counter... Um, all those different things are still fantastic options. It's just a different play style. Um, so something that, that would be more useful on those higher difficulty levels where you may need to leverage those skills, to leverage those abilities. Um, not sure why I just did the double EMP. I guess I really wanted to make sure those guys were locked down. Uh, and I don't think I really noticed it until right after this jump, but hey, look! There's one of those gladiator sentinels! Hooray! 
damn it. Yes, Kisaragi, they will be a real pain in the butt. So yeah, Absos units, the modified ones, their shields are stronger, they're able to um, do the uh, shields more frequently. They can also heal, so they release kind of the like repair module that you see on uh, Amaguchi's Gen 4 Sentinel. Uh, I don't believe any of the other Sentinels actually have that option. Uh, here, now that I've noticed the uh, Gladiator Sentinel, I'm like, okay, buddy. You're out of here now, because between Apsos and the Gladiator, I will gladly take out the uh, Gladiator before he can get shields. Uh, that is not a fun time. Um, meanwhile, my sentry guns have really been able to take care of most of the ones that were placed on the map during that event, so that's really under control now. Uh, it's just mainly going to be an awareness of what is going to pop up in these next upcoming waves, but between having the Gen 2s with the veritable cavalcade of sentry guns that I will be placing down, uh, along with having the Gen 1s, just general uh, crowd control options with the EMP attractors, uh, it should be okay. Um, it's, it's interesting with the Abso shield units, you want to Always make sure you have that EMP option on something available to you. Um, here I'm trying out the EMP surrounding ability, because I also really liked that one. Um, at least for uh, Kijiyama. Uh, I thought it was certainly a, a very good use of his close combat skills. Got the missiles there, sentry guns cleaning up that guy. They just plop that terror carrier right in front of me. Fantastic, I'll take it. Ogata's right there. He's got that wide ranging demolisher blade, and with them all on the ground now, that range will allow him to basically take out everything there. Yeah. And that's that's his extra bonus passive normally. Demolisher Blade is more of like a, a frontal cone, but he adds those side sections to his ability, which I thought was pretty good. He just left it there. Unlike putting on, like, say, Limiter Release or, you know, having the ceramic armor or anything like that. Uh, Hijiyama definitely can lean into that a lot easier than the others, I feel like, because he just does have all of those passives, um, but then you really do need to make sure that whatever else he has is just super versatile, because otherwise he's just being a decoy. Um, and at that point in time, like, why don't you just have one of the Gen 2s utilize their decoys, or or one of the, um, the Avenger Guardians to not only be a decoy, but also provide some damage. And that was very quick. So yeah, uh, that Gladiator Sentinel Kaiju showed up and was summarily executed via firing squad by sentry guns. They're good. And I feel like I've actually got a pretty good wombo combo here between Sekigahara and Ogata just... Sekigahara setting him up and Ogata knocking him down there. Pretty good. Pretty good. No complaints here. Yeah, the only thing that um, Hijama really doesn't have is a, a good counter against those gladiator types. Because uh, I didn't give him rush attack, I gave him leap attack. Because I think his bonus is to leap attack? Uh, it's been a minute. Now, just trying to get my Gen 2s kind of situated a little bit better. Setting, setting up my boy band over there on the side. Again, EMP surrounding. Very strong. That'll incapacitate those guys. It gets that high quad paralyzed perfectly in line for those sentry guns. And that's really what's happening here, is that these guys are basically... The Gen 1s are my response team. They are going to where I need them to be in place, 
so that they can lock down enemies who are then just absolutely obliterated by the sentry guns. And then I have fallback options like the jam and rocket launcher there that'll slow them down. It doesn't lock them in place like the EMP does. So it's kind of my gut reaction is, okay, I might as well do that. And then I just started to fall in love with that plasma cutter. It's so much damage. Just good, good day, sir. I said good day. 90,000 damage. Mm, I love big numbers. Love them. And yeah, that'll pretty much just polish it off. I've got to cleaning things up with the Demolisher Blade again. And that's... that's that. Not bad. Yeah, so not something that we really particularly saw, but they did mention the uh, the repair nanotech. So uh, I know on my first playthrough that was definitely something that was a, uh, a bit more aggravating. Uh, thankfully, learned my lesson and uh, let Ogata handle it, clearly. Um, learned my lesson and equipped enough uh, EMP skills to disable those guys. Uh, and that's really kind of the, the key factor into that, is you want to make sure that they are locked down, that they aren't able to either activate their abilities or move. Um, because that can also create some issues, especially with those uh, gladiator uh, kaiju. If they are mobile and jumping around everywhere, they can definitely get to the terminal and start doing some serious damage. Uh, so our last one is an enhanced twin tail EX. Amaguchi needs to be on the team, need to make sure nobody dies, and make sure that the terminal doesn't get the crap beat out of it. So uh, other than that, not, uh, not terribly difficult, right? What could go, what could go possibly wrong? What could go wrong at all? Long range twin tail kaiju. Mmm. Good times. Yeah. Let's see, uh, let's see what's gonna happen. I have something to report to you all. Uh, finally. Is this processing stuff done yet? It's well over 90% processed. We're so close. But there's a problem. As some of you may know, I'm working from the command ship in orbit. Unfortunately, it's still on that orbital path. Soon I'll be too far from your location. I'll lose signal, and I won't be able to communicate. And when that happens, the mainframe processing will be suspended. It'll be another 850 minutes before I come back from a full orbit. Until I can re-establish a connection, you have to hold on. But that's just over 14 hours. We have to hold out until tomorrow afternoon? Please don't give up hope. Until I get cut off, I promise I'll do everything I can. This is insane. Have you seen how fast new ones keep appearing? There's no way we can fend them off for that long. <sighs> Say... As long as you're still here, maybe you could sing for us? <sighs> Alright. As long as you can hear my voice, you'll know I'm still connected. Warning! Dymo signatures approaching. Preparing to intercept. Initiating tactical analysis.
And so begins the best mission in the whole game. Sort of. So uh, this particular track that's playing in the background is uh, Seaside Vacation. Uh, it's an awesome track, honestly. It's, it's that tune that's actually playing in the background of Amaguchi's selection uh, for the Remembrance sequences. And it's a track that you'll hear kind of off and on uh, throughout, the, throughout the game in those different portions where Miyuki and Abba is, is prevalent. Uh, it's a really good track. I, I really enjoyed it. I frequently was listening to it when I wasn't playing the game, just kind of on my way to work or whatever, in in the real world. Um, certainly an interesting choice for a combat track, no doubt. Um, but, uh, yes, a very good piece of music to listen to, and I highly recommend it. Um, so as for this mission, though, ho, 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 boy. Good time. So it's not really uh, like your traditional missions. It's a boss mission, and uh, this particular wave uh, doesn't have any other enemy waves really coming in. It's much more puzzle-esque, uh, where you are presented with just tons of ranged dudes with their support. So you have the Apsos units, you have... Um, like you could barely see it there, they actually started to repair some of the units. They got a shield off. Um, so now these twin tails have shields, uh, you have RPFs, uh, to manufacture in place of waves. Um, so here I am sending Hijama in and being like, nope. So there's those thermal missiles, uh, you kind of saw it right at the tail end there. Uh, you definitely don't want to get hit by those guys. Um, so really it's, uh, making sure to have some method of being able to handle that. Shield matrix is one option, that's the option I go with here. Um, this is where those anti-air flares really <laughs> come in handy. Um, also EMP surrounding takes care of that left quadrant of them. Somehow? I'm okay with it. Uh, EMP does actually handle those. Multi-lock missile will also handle them. Um, I just kind of keep making my way forward, trying to bust through those shields. You can see them slowly coming in. Uh, interceptors are also phenomenal against them. Uh, I think just to make sure that those two guys that are the long-range ones get distracted, I throw that Guardian Avenger down. Uh, because, again, the main goal is to just take out that Twin Tail. So, as long as it dies, we win. So here I am trying to figure out how to get Hijiyama there without really dangering him. And going, Leap Attack. It's good. So... It's still going to be a upgraded unit, so it still has like that upgraded armor. Uh, clearly it has the upgraded damage capacity, what with those thermal missiles that can absolutely wreck our shit. Uh, so you don't wanna, don't wanna mess with it. Still got a couple of small units here on the map. Nothing my team can't handle. Yeah, so we basically end up just mopping those guys up. Uh, there's still a little bit of healing going on there with those jerks, but not a huge deal. Hijiyama's in position, so now should be good. Uh, I make one of the biggest mistakes ever, uh, the anti-defensive... Oh, maybe not. Maybe that was actually a genius play. Hmm. I forgot that. I think it was a different time where I actually deployed the uh, entire defensive flares and it just wasn't in the right spot. But that time it was perfect. Like, basically, as he's launching them, it's doing nothing. Grant you, if he gets that attack off, then Hijiyama's in for a bad time. But I don't think we have to worry much, because our interceptors are en route. Yep, there it is. Sunrise. So we made it through. 
So like they were mentioning there, uh, the overall like plot related goal is that they are basically just delaying the kaiju until they can activate this program, uh, kind of taking back uh, universal control. Um, congrats, Miura, you're the MVP. But uh, originally, uh, it was thought that it wouldn't take too terribly long. They were kind of closing in, like they said, 90% complete. Uh, but since it is based on kind of a satellite ship that's rotating around this planet, it is going to be out of range shortly, which means that they have to wait until it finishes its orbit again. So that's 14 hours. And this is where I come back to the point where I talked about every mission has a timestamp. And if you've been examining those timestamps, that would be like another 30 plus missions. So we'll have to see how our Sentinel pilots handle that challenge. Uh, however, that is going to wrap it up for this uh, particular sequence of the destruction missions. We'll be getting back to the remembrance sequences, beginning with uh, our star of the show here, as it were, Juro Karabe. Uh, so we'll finally be getting into kind of that second half of their storyline, uh, really getting into the meat and potatoes of what is happening in this world of 13 Sentinel. So I'm excited for that. I hope you are as well. Uh, if you are excited for such amazing content, you can get notified by YouTube by simply hitting that like and subscribe button. It's how this works, supposedly. So thanks uh, one last time for watching, and uh, until next time, my friends, take it easy.